friends, my relatives, welcome to another program, Eagle and Condor. And uh, today, January 8, 2020, uh, we have uh, much to talk about and uh, topics we want to introduce you to and uh, subject matter that uh, will carry us through the rest of the year. So to begin with, I, I want to extend uh, solid greetings to everybody and look forward to a happy and healthy uh, self, yourself and ourselves into the, this coming year and to be strong, uh, to say your prayers. You know, there's nothing like strong prayers to to guide you through the day and keep keep us in balance and thoughtful, you know, to one another, respectful. And indeed, in these times, uh, uh, you never know what's going to happen when you when you get up. You know, there's so much that goes on that there at the White House and across uh, the country here in Washington, D.C., you know, that uh, you have to really prepare for the day, you know, put an agenda together, what you hope to do and what you hope to address. And uh, uh, some of you might have uh, seen our program uh, last month uh, in December. We had quite a few reruns. You might even think that this is a rerun because you've seen this shirt sometime before. <laughs> okay, but uh, uh, just to let you know that uh, last month we did one program and uh, it was our first uh, experience through December. So this December 2020, we hope to have a program where you won't be watching the same uh, program as you did uh, this past December. And so my relatives uh, also, the uh, I want to thank uh, many of the people that uh, put the activities together last year here, particularly in the Bay Area, who. Uh, worked very hard and we always strive uh, for unity and let, let that be a benchmark in our uh, advocacy that uh, we're uh, joining together and trying to unify our Indian community, American Indian community and Indian peoples of all tribes and people from the four directions for that matter uh, together in unity uh, and fighting for justice and resisting uh, the colonization and to the, begin the decolonization process uh, by changing the narrative as we have been doing uh, in these recent pasts. Uh, more notably here in San Francisco uh, was uh, very key the taking down of the, the statute, the pioneer statute that was there for over 90 years at uh, near uh, the Civic Center and uh, the public library so uh, we're changing uh, the narrative as as we're going forward in these in these times uh, Indian peoples uh, throughout the world for that matter have much to contribute uh, in uh, providing traditional knowledge in, in many of these areas and uh, participating with the governments for that matter uh, to bring uh, stability sustainability and working uh, toward the betterment of their communities. Uh, with all these uh, conflicts that are going on uh, around the world, uh, uh, the United States, as you've noticed, is very much involved in a lot of these cases, which is one of the reasons why the United States also has so many military installations around the world. So I think we need to be watchful of how the United States is uh, spending uh, its budget uh, where the majority of it almost now is going toward uh, the military. So having said that and with these conflicts, uh, I would encourage uh, many of the young men and women who are thinking of military service, do it for the military of peace, stay home and work in your communities and work to uh, uh, bring uh, peace of mind to ourselves and making the world better by demilitarizing. Uh, let's try and remember uh, the songs uh, of Buffy St. Marie, and in particular her latest one in her uh, new CD, uh, Medicine Songs, and one of which is called uh, The War Racket. So I think that song in itself can explain the dire situation that we're in today. It's a, it's a, it's a racket, the military 
racket. And the best thing for all of us is to stay out of the military and work in, in our homes and in our communities. And uh, I also wanted to say that uh, uh, we have a new uh, person that will be co-hosting with me, and I'd like to just uh, just briefly introduce uh, 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 Jolene uh, Crawford, mm -hmm. uh, who will be sharing uh, the calendar reading and other activities with us, and uh, we'll be uh, getting back to her in just a few minutes. I, I just uh, wanted to let you know the rest of uh, the program for today, besides uh, uh, speaking with uh, Jolene Crawford as our co-host here, uh, the second half of the program, we do have a, a video that we want to show to you. It's uh, the uh, uh, American uh, History of American Indian Achievements, and this is a 30-minute segment that will include uh, uh, people like uh, John Echo Hawk, he's the attorney for uh, NAR for the Native American uh, Rights Fund. Uh, 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 also, uh, I might add that John Echo Hawk was very much involved in uh, during the occupation of Alcatraz and bringing attention to uh, the the, uh, the legal ramifications of the people that were there at the island that time, and he has since pursued uh, civil rights. Uh, also, in the video that you'll see will be uh, Billy Mills. Many of you, uh, or some of you, that is, might remember him as the Olympian of 1964 in Japan, uh, having won the long distance 1,500-meter uh, run, I believe it is. And uh, the film also includes Wilma Mankiller, uh, who was a Cherokee chief and uh, out of Oklahoma. She passed away a couple years ago, but I might add that she grew up in the Bay Area and she attended a high school in San Francisco and hopefully in the very near future we're going to strive to name one of the high schools in San Francisco with her name and that is Wilma Mankiller. Right. So I hope you enjoy that uh, video. Uh, also I wanted to mention another important person uh, of great achievement in this video is um, a geneticist uh, from out of Stanford and that uh, be uh, Frank Charles uh, uh, Duke Poo, and uh, I had the great pleasure myself of uh, having uh, met and worked uh, at uh, uh, bioethical level uh, with the, uh, several geneticists at Stanford, including uh, uh, Frank uh, Duke Poo, in uh, developing a uh, collective uh, human rights of the human genome. So maybe we'll talk about that another time. But I hope you do enjoy the video. And now uh, I want to uh, come back with uh, Jolene. And uh, Jolene, first of all, before you do the calendar reading of okay. events in the Bay Area and the surrounding uh, uh, state, uh, if you would tell us a little bit about yourself. I, I know you, you are Ojibwe, uh, Minnesota, White Earth, yeah. and also Robinson Rancheria Pomo, Northern California. Yeah. Please, if, if you can elaborate oh. further. Okay, thank you for, for having me here sure. too as well, Tony. And um, I, I was born in Oakland, uh, and, when, and my father is Minnesota, White Earth, my mother was Pomo, and they were, back in them times, you know, they were, she was relocated into the Bay Area. Uh -huh. So uh, that's where my mother and father met. And so at that time, um, I was in Oakland for uh, maybe, California for about five years before we, moved back to my father's area which was Minneapolis and so I pretty much grew up in the Minneapolis air area you know when when AIM was born back in 69 so I was in in that area I seen I seen you know the people that we talk about today you know of, of when AIM was born and I didn't know you know I was like seven years old you know at back in that time so but now you know knowing that you know we had you know great leaders you uh -huh, know that uh -huh. were, were that i grew up around with so it, it kind of gives me a little you know uh pride there so sure and and then when i when i was about 28 29 i moved back here to northern california you know we all moved back here and i've been here ever since so uh -huh. and, and what are the, some of the issues that you've been involved in over the years uh, uh jolene well, well well when we came here 
when we moved back, everything was great, you know, but then the disenrollment started coming up. And so um, I had a first hand in, in the disenrollment uh, with our tribe. And uh, also I, I became the, the Pomo. Or yes. Yes. California with the Pomo. California Pomo up north. So and the Rancheria and in, you, your family were disenrolled. Uh, particularly just a few people that the uh, tribal chair uh, it started with me though there and um, I I went on to um, I, I remember this was a high point but was this like 10 15 years ago or yeah yeah uh -huh. two, 2010 when I was actually disenrolled but it was like a three-year process that it took her uh -huh. to kind of learn the ways of the court we went to the San Francisco uh, you know, court, and uh, so she really didn't know, you know, how to how to go about it. There were some sure. disenrollments going on down south, you know. So, uh, what about directly through the Bureau of Indian Affairs, who they, they in the past they've hardly wanted to touch yes the topic, and th and that's what it was. So this is why you went to the court. Yes, she took me to the Cal uh, Supreme Court in here in San Francisco. So, uh, and it was kind of her kind of trying to f figure out, you know, how to disenroll and everything. And so what the judge had did was, you know, told her, this is your, you know, you guys have to deal with this, is which uh -huh. where she had created that judicial system within the tribe to go on and, and disenroll, you know, like 68 other members of our tribe. So kind of gave her, you know, uh, what to do, you know, in as far as disenrolling the people and who, who yeah. is this uh, the the chair or the attorney or the or tribal chair of uh -huh. Robinson Rancheria back, uh -huh. at, back that at that time, time. yeah and, and did all 68 come back oh yes we were all re-enrolled uh, let's see in 2016 what was it a mistake or a birth certificate um, or it had if to I may ask my mine sport. had to do with a dual enrollment and and so that's where she started with me the others came uh disen became disenrolled on the 19 1940 census it was so it had a lot to do with the census mm -hmm. that uh she used those grounds on disenrolling those tribal members uh, and, and for <coughs> our, our our viewers and listeners uh this has been been a big problem not just uh with the, the pomo and the rancheria the robinson but across the state uh, oh yeah there was a lot of disenrollment, and across the country, for that matter. Oh yes. And uh, it's still being dealt with, uh, and maybe there'll be time where we can go more deeper into oh, yeah. this topic in the course of our program working together, uh, yes. Jolene uh, with yeah. Eagle and Condor. Yeah. You know, inviting some people that can talk further, uh, you know, about right. this. But tell us some more about uh, the Robinson Rancheria and the Pomo people. The experience that you had, for example, with Bloody Island and. And, uh, and uh, how did that, uh, how, how did the, the massacre that happened, when was that? Uh, that was back in the 1800s. Uh, uh, our people were being oppressed like many of uh, the other, you know, Native American nations across the country, you know. Um, this is like our massacre story, you know, where uh, the Calvary had came in, you know, our people were, you know, starving and hungry, you know, where it, push them to the point to kill, you know, the oppressors, you know, and, and so um, what had happened with that, you know, they sent in the Calvary, and so it happened in a place there uh, right off of Highway 20, in, uh, right, right down the street from where, where we reside now today, uh, is a place called Bloody, uh, Bloody Island. It used to be an island back in those days. And uh, where, where about in Northern California for, for people to get in a uh, vivid that would idea. be uh, Nice California Lake County uh -huh. so and you said off the road what? off a of highway 20 okay yeah so uh, and and it, right now it's not it's not a uh, it's not an island anymore you know it's uh -huh. been yeah but um, I, I was gonna ask you about that so so in desperation your people were being threatened and they fled to what was uh, they, yes. the island yes. at that time, and that's when we were hunted down and we were killed. There was there was women, children, you know, and men, women, and children. Uh -huh. So, and my my grand my great grandmother was one of those survivors, and uh, she went into hiding, 
and um, she survived. So, and that's how you know we're here today. So, a lot of the, a lot of the members of Robinson Rancheria are descendants of uh, Lucy Moore, um, you know, and there's other survivors from there, you know. That I remember my my auntie talking about, you know, mm. some with. You know, you, you can tell who they were, you know, well, they're all passed away now, but, mm -hmm. you know, she they spoke of some of those survivors and which kind of made up of uh, the tribes from around that, the lake. You know, there's like fri five tribes around the lake now, so. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have to come back yeah. to that part of California history right. another time. And now you, you live close to, uh, uh, on the eastern side here. Yes. A little close to with the, is it Miwok or yes. Tuolumne? Yes. You, you want to tell us a little bit about what they're up to and, and uh, uh, Tuolumne, are you involved in, in that community? Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I, um, we've, we've participated with the Acorn Festival uh, that, that they have there every year. It's a, a annual Acorn Festival. I'm sure some of us has heard of it. It's in the uh, September right around, you know, uh, Native American you know, when they do the dances and everything. So uh -huh. that's when that happens. And um, they have sweats, you know, every month on the second Wednesday. So I participate in that and, you know, um, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just new to the area. So I'm, I'm getting, you know, uh -huh. getting uh, used to it in, in meeting with the natives of that area uh, too well, as well. And one of the reasons also why I invited you onto the show is I've seen you in, in the course of time here in the Bay Area in, in yeah. different events and activities, including uh, DQ University that we were both involved in before and yes. currently, and uh, we can talk about that topic yes. and that uh, DQ University uh, in the course of the times that we have our program here, okay. which Certainly. I'm sure a lot of people would be interested. And uh, now if maybe you'd like to get on with the, the calendar reading sure. of Bay Area events. And uh, this is put on by the uh, Native American Contemporary Arts. Okay. So our Bay Area Indian calendar for January 8th, 2020. Upcoming events now till January 31st, now through January 31st, 2020. Indigenous Futurism, Explorations in Art and Play. Indigenous Futurism envisions Native futures, Indigenous hopes and dreams recovered by rethinking the past in a new framework. Uh, the ex exhibition brings together graphic comics, science fiction, and gameplay to create provocative space and engagement and thought about Indigenous futures and possibilities. Em enmeshed in cultural knowledge, works by visual arts, artists explore graphics, gaming and superheroes game d game designers engage with language role play strategy and cooperative play to create new worlds in computer tabletop and card games at the cn gorman museum museum in davis okay so ongoing um how do you mm -hmm. okay ongoing okay Ongoing, where are we at? Oh, <laughs> uh, cultural programs, second Saturdays of each month during the occupation, Native American artists called for an Indian cultural center on Alcatraz Island. In keeping with the idea, cultural programs and activities will take place the second Saturday of each month from December 2019 through June 2022. Visitors can participate in a variety of presentations, workshops, demonstrations, and activities led by former occupiers and Native American groups. Be sure to check the Alcatraz events calendar for current lists of programs. February 8th, 2020, BAAITS, Powwow, Fort Mason, San Francisco, California, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m is the largest two-spirit powwow in the world. The Bay Area American Indian Two Spirits exists to restore and recover the role of the Two Spirits people within the American Indian First Nations community by creating a forum for the 
spiritual, cultural, and artistic expression of two-spirit people. 2020 will mark the ninth annual BAAITS powwow. Learn more at www.baaits.org. And our ongoing events, Eagle and the Condor, the TV talk show is broadcasted uh, the second and fourth Sunday of each month from four to five with our host, Tony Gonzalez. Thank you. And uh, we have Thursdays, Drum and Dance at the Indian Friendship House from six to nine. Uh, they have a potluck, uh, address is 523 International Boulevard, Oakland, California. There is also a Tuesday yoga class and Monday Zumba class at the Indian Friendship House. All Indian Friendship House events are online at www.ifhurbanres.org. So we have Thursday, Thursday's drum and dance class, 5.30 to 7.30 at the Roosevelt Community Center, 901 East Santa Clara Street, San Jose. Designed to improve and promote self-esteem, self-image, intergenerational connectedness, and cultural pride. To register, contact Stephanie Gregory at 408-445-3400, extension 1053. Program title, Native American Future Generations Living in Cultural Through Song and Dance. Thursday, Native Youth Empowerment Programs, 6 to 8, at the Indian Health Center Family Resource Center, 25 North, 14th Street, Suite 140, San Jose, California. A creative space to learn about your culture, make positive changes in our community, family, cultural, higher education, and healthy living. So I think save the date opportunities. Uh, just now sharing the second episode of season two of the Native American Sea Pod. Please join us for a Food is Medicine, Native Health and Cultural Foodscapes Part Two. So we're gonna go back to our host, Tony Gonzalez. Thank you, Julie. All right. You're and welcome. my relatives uh, uh, keeping uh, with the the uh, calendar of events, don't forget 2020, very important, right? We all know that uh, uh, registering to vote is your voice in the community. So don't underestimate uh, the power of your vote, especially in these times. So uh, register to vote, get ready uh, for March elections. And then there's the, uh, the elections in November that we're all striving for. So make sure that everyone is registered there. Also, the 2020 census is very important for all of us to be counted. And for the Indian, uh, Indian community, American Indian community in particular, uh, it means more federal dollars for the needed services in education and health and uh, other uh, projects. So be sure that uh, we uh, are tuned in with the 2020 voter registration and the 2020 census. I can't uh, emphasize that enough. And of course, uh, uh, I'm also uh, directing uh, AIM West and we can go to that website uh, for more information of activities uh, for the year at www.aim-west.org and or you can call me as well, all right, at this number at 415 Five seven seven one four nine two, and I give you that information and phone number. So if you have a flyer of events, activities, you have an idea you'd like to share with me or with uh, Jolene, uh, please uh, write us or call us. Let us know. Uh, when you go to the Aim West website, you'll also see that there's a uh, film documentary of political prisoner Leonard Peltier. I encourage you to uh, look at that documentary, The Life and Times of Leonard Peltier. He's been in prison now 44 years for a crime he did not commit. And uh, he's known as a political prisoner worldwide, uh, uh, also by Nelson Mandela, Desmond Tutu, Rigoberta Menchu, many Nobel Peace Prize winners, 
and also the the uh, 50 congressional representatives have called for his release. Uh, very important. Also, other AIM West activities coming up. Uh, February 27th is Wounded Knee Day, uh, uh, the uh, 1973 occupation that went on for 71 days. And so in solidarity with Pine Ridge uh, Reservation and the Tribal Council, declaring that as Independent Day, Independence Day, uh, we'll be uh, doing an activity there. We hope to have Lynn Foster uh, with us in, in the community and on the show in February as well. Also, the, the, uh, the, uh, we're honoring the women in March, International Women's Month, and hopefully we'll have an activity at Intertribal Friendship House. Also, uh, April, the United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues. We're putting a delegation together there. Uh, so all this and more by going to the website at aim-west.org. Well, we're getting close to the time, my relatives, and uh, just to remind you that there is a video after uh, uh, this programming here uh, for your uh, uh, awareness of the Indian achievements I here in the United States, and we'll be bringing you uh, uh, a video after every other uh, program that we do bring here at Eagle and Condor. That's it. Uh, we'll see you again next time on Eagle and Condor. Thank you.
And so I say to America, I want you to remember our past. This past will give you direction for the future. Just as our people in our past, we are the spirit of the future. 